What we're going to be going over here is a large stock dividend. That's where you increase the number of common stock shares outstanding through a stock dividend that's issued to the shareholders. So for example here, we're going to have Corporation A and they're going to have these equity accounts. They're going to have common stock here. They'll have 120,000 shares outstanding at $5 par value per share for $600,000. Then they have additional paid in capital here to common stock at 950,000. And then they have retained earnings sitting here at $2 million. So but a total amount of shareholders equity they have here is the sum total here three million five hundred and fifty thousand dollars now they go out and they issue a 30 percent stock dividend it's declared here and at the time of that declaration here the uh, market price on a common stock share here is forty dollars per share now for our dividend here well we have one hundred twenty thousand shares outstanding thirty percent dividend here that's the number of additional shares they're going to be issuing here so that equates to 36,000 shares uh, of, for the stock dividend that's going to be paid out here to the current stockholders here. So that's going to be the additional number of shares they're going to receive here, 36,000. So what, we've, what we're doing here, we're increasing the number of common shares, stock shares outstanding as a dividend here. So it's not uh, called a stock split here. It's acting as a stock split, but if we call it a dividend here, then we have to handle it in the fashion that we're going to look at here. So two things are going on here. We've increased the number of shares outstanding. By doing that, we have to capitalize part of our retained earnings here. That's where, again, we increase the number of common shares here that are outstanding, and we're going to incre we're increasing them here by what they call a large stock dividend. So what we do here is we're going to transfer at the par value. There's going to be no increase in the additional paid in capital here for a common stock on this on this stock dividend. So for and that's for stock dividends that are greater than 20 20 to 25 percent of the common stock that's outstanding. Again, a large stock dividend here. So what we have outstanding is that 30 percent here, uh, or the dividend here that we're going to pay out in form of stock, additional shares of stock here is 30 percent, 120,000 shares currently outstanding, a 30 percent, uh, that get at a 30 percent increase in the shares here as a dividend, that's going to be 36,000 additional shares that we have to, we're going to issue to our uh, stockholders here. So let's go and look at how we account for that here. So what we have is we've got our retained earnings account here and then we have our common stock par account and then the additional paid in capital to our common stock. So what we're doing here we have to transfer our retained earnings here uh, from the earned capital here as it's sitting to the paid in capital account here for common stock. So what we have here, credit sitting on our retained earnings, that's at $2 million here. Then we have the 30% uh, stock dividend here. That equates to uh, $180,000. So we're going to reduce our retained earnings here, debited for $180,000. So that was based on the fact here that we have 120,000 shares outstanding here at a 30% dividend rate here. That's going to be for 36,000 shares times the $5 par value per share. Here we're using the par value. That's everything is based on the par value here. That equates to 180,000. So what is happening here is we're transferring that into our common stock account. So what we would do is we credit or increase our common stock here by $180,000. So we originally have 600,000 here sitting at 120,000 shares outstanding at a $5 par amount. Now we're going to get 36,000 additional shares here on the dividend again at the $5 par amount here. Par amount per share remains the same here. So we debited or reduced our retained earnings. We moved it over here and credited our common stock here. So we transferred paid in capital uh, are transferred from the earned capital here to the paid in capital. And then we have to deal with this additional paid in capital to our common stock. Well actually what you're going to look at here it it's zero here. And the reason, there's no effect here. It doesn't come into effect when you're working with these large stock dividends here. There's no effect. You record a zero amount here. So you have no increase in additional paid in capital. Only the common stock par amount here was increased here. And when you're dealing with these large stock dividends, the market price uh, per share here of the common stock doesn't become a factor. With the small stock dividends, it did here. But when you're dealing with these large stock dividends, it doesn't become a factor. So let's, the other thing we want to look at, well, let's go over and let's talk about this here. So again, shareholders are going to pay 
zero amount here, they're going to receive what they call a stock dividend. They're going to pay nothing for it. Company just issues them additional uh, shares of stock. And it's on a prorated basis, and we'll go over that. Now, it does not affect any assets or liabilities here, this stock dividend. And the par value does not decrease on a per share basis. It stays the same here in a per share basis uh, from what it was here. And the other thing is, the only thing is the total uh, par value of the common stocks will increase by the, the amount here, that dividend. So we had 36,000 shares here of a dividend at the $5 par amount. That's what we would receive, uh, increase our common stock par value account for. And again, this is the key thing here. We increase the number of shares that are outstanding. We had 120,000 here. Now we increased it by 36,000 with the dividend here. So we have now a total of 156,000 shares outstanding. And that is simply here that that was shown here, that 30% stock dividend uh, here at based on the 120,000 shares that are outstanding, gives us the 36,000 additional shares here. And then the other thing is here, we want to look at our shareholders' equity, and it only involved our retained earnings, common stock, and additional paid in capital. So a, sh a, share, a stockholders' equity does not change. What we did is we had a reduction here in our retained earnings by 180,000, but we increased our common stock here by 180,000 here. So. Um, it just balanced right out here. And again, additional paid in capital, other key point here, one of these large stock dividends, it doesn't come into effect here. We don't uh, increase it uh, based on the market value. It, it's not a factor. We only deal with the par amount here. So shareholders' equity did not change. All right, so let's go back, and we're going to look at how this affects here our, the um, pro rate of basis here for our shareholders. So Let's go up here and start out with that. Now, there's many reasons for a stock dividend. We're not going to go into all of them, but what it does do, it increases the number of shares outstanding by that dividend, stock dividend that's going to be paid to the shareholders. And we could just look at some main, uh, main reason here. It could be a good gesture. Uh, stock dividends are considered dividends here by the shareholders. It may not change their equity holdings here, but they like getting dividends. So it's, it's really a good gesture here. And again, here, in number, another point is it can retain profits. Yeah, the corporation can retain their profits by capitalizing part of the retained earnings here. That goes into their capital account here. And then it can increase the marketability of stock through a lower market price. And all we're doing is saying that, say the stock price was very high here, you issue a great number of more stocks and it's going to drive the stock price down here. That would be more attractive for few, uh, other either people that are buying the stock here. Okay, so now let's go and let's look at this, what we're talking about, our, port, our proportion here for a stockholder. So each stockholder maintains exactly the same proportionate interest in the company. Number one, the stock issued to the stockholders is on a pro rata basis, and we'll look at that. And number two here, each shareholder has the same total book value here at the end. Okay, so let's look at our book value here first on a per common stock share here. And that's really the stockholders equity here divided by the number of shares outstanding. So before here, before the stock dividend, uh, and we're just, that was that uh, stock uh, shareholders equity of 3550000 divided by the number of shares that were outstanding here, 120000 We're going to come up with $29.58 per share here, uh, book value per share here. After the dividend, we still have the uh, stockholders equity, the same here at $3,550,000, but we increased our number of shares here to 156000 that are outstanding, and that's going to equate here to $22.76 cents per share. Okay, so let's so we've driven our book value has gone down here from 2958 down to 2276 after the stock dividend because we have more shares outstanding. Now, let's assume that a shareholder lets owns 10% of the common stock or he's at 10% interest in the company here. So, what they had here originally is 120,000 shares at 10% of that. Plus, now they're going to get 10% here of those additional shares that are being issued here in the stock dividend, 10% times the additional shares of 36,000. So that's going to give our, our shareholders now going to own 15,600 shares after the dividend. They originally owned, uh, it, what, what it, that was 12,000 shares here, that 10% of the company. Now they're going to own 15,600 shares through the stock dividend. So uh, before here, 
uh, here on a shareholder. Okay, before they had 12,000 shares here, and they had the book value of $29.58 per share here, and that equates to $355,000. Now, after the stock dividend here, they increased, they, re, they now hold 15,600 shares. The book value has gone down to $22.76 here, but that equates to, again, $355,000 here that they own in the company here. So before they had 355,000 with the higher book value, lower number of shares. Now they own the same amount here, 355,000. A lower book value, but a greater number of shares here. So that's what we're talking about. The stock was issued on a pro rata basis. So company has, or the stockholder has 10% interest in the company here, and they receive a 10% additional shares here again. Uh, their 10% ownership times the 36,000 share dividend here gives them 3,600 shares. That was the additional amount of shares they had here. So before they only had 12,000, now they have uh, 3,600 additional shares for a total amount here of 15,600 shares. Again, just looking at it for our stock dividend, that was that 120,000 outstanding, 30% stock dividend for the additional shares here, 36,000 shares that are be distributing off to all the common stock shareholders of the company. Now, we could look at, the uh, same would be true for earnings per share here. That would be the net income divided by the number of shares. Uh, so before they had a, would have a greater earnings per share, but they would have less shares here. The stockholders on an individual basis would have less shares here but they'd have a greater earnings per share now after the dividend they're going to have lower earnings per share here but they're going to own more shares so it just balances out so in either case the shareholders receive the same proportionate earnings of the company so we went over here this uh, large stock dividend here and just remember when you have these stock dividends they're distributed on a pro rata basis so the um, stockholders maintain exactly the same proportionate interest in the company here based on that stock issued here on a pro rata basis so this is just an overview here remember large stock dividends uh, don't uh, don't involve any additional paid in capital all they do is involve the par value of the stock and it's uh, transferred here from um, the retained earnings which would be the earned capital account into the uh, cap paid in capital account into the common stock at the par value based on the number of uh, shares here based on that stock dividend okay so that takes care of our large stock dividend here